Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here again today. Today's video, I've actually had a request to talk a little bit about my origin story, which I think is super awesome. It's not something that I would have thought about doing myself had it not been suggested and requested. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. The origin story of the social factory as a small business. I graduated from Humber College in 2012 and I actually took a three-year advanced diploma program. Um, it was in public relations and I'm a huge, huge advocate of Humber College and of that program. Um, at the time, it was pretty prestigious to get into. Um, they were only accepting about 60 students and we were all a really close, kind of tight-knit family because it was such a small group of people. It was divided into two sections and every year we were essentially with the same group um, that we started with first year up until the very last year that kind of switched things up a little bit and it was incredible. It was an incredible program. I'm so happy that that's the direction I ended up taking uh, because I had also been accepted to U of T. I've been accepted into um, Ryerson, uh, Laurier, University of Waterloo. There were so many different avenues that I was interested in and that I still find myself to be very interested in. And it made it really difficult because I was kind of hoping that by applying to all of these different places, I would get accepted to a few that would help to narrow it down. And then I got accepted to everything and it made my decision way more difficult. <laughs> so I ended up taking public relations at Humber and it was super hands-on. It was one of the very first programs offered utilizing social media as a small business and developing an online brand. I really started to realize like, hey, you know what? Facebook, it was only Facebook at the time. There was no Instagram. Um, but I was like, oh, Facebook can actually be used for more than just your Friday night party pictures. It can actually be used to communicate with your audience and to reach your audience in a more personal kind of way. Um, before, big brands were really unattainable for their consumers. So social media for small business was something that I was really, really intrigued in and passionate about, which kind of led into the beginnings of my career within brand development and um, communications and digital marketing. So after I graduated in 2012, I went into a marketing position. I was a marketing assistant at Golder Associates, which is an environmental engineering corporation. I was there for a little under a year. It was a contract position and I really enjoyed it. Um, it wasn't for me. I loved the people but I wanted to be doing something that was more at an agency kind of level as opposed to corporate. I wanted to work with a ton of different clients from all different backgrounds. And thankfully the next job that I took on was at a boutique marketing agency in Brantford as an account coordinator. And when I was there, I had the opportunity to work with everything ranging from, um, construction product to skincare and it, really makes me a great trivia partner because I have such a weird and broad and diverse range of knowledge from this diverse portfolio of clients that I had and continue to have because in my field, you're really required to learn and understand not only the brand itself and the voice and the message that they want to communicate to their audience, but you kind of have to understand the target demographic and the products and the services and everything that kind of works within that, the competitors. Um, and because of that, like I said, I absorbed a lot of random knowledge over the years. Um, so I was at that boutique agency for a little shy of a year when I then decided to move 
move into growth hacking, which essentially is about growing communities digitally. So growing newsletter subscriber lists, growing Facebook pages. Um, and I did that at a tech firm in Waterloo. I was there up until September of last year. Um, so I was there for about five years. And during that time, started in the growth hacking kind of area of that company and moved into more of a product manager role um, and capacity which involved overseeing more of that stuff and being a little bit less hands-on with it um, which i enjoyed less than the initial job that i was hired on for um, but i was still very much involved in the brand that i kind of helped to grow and craft early on in the beginning because of that it was easy to kind of look past like yeah maybe i'm not doing exactly what i wanted to be doing but I still get to be part of this really cool brand and watch it continue to flourish and grow and evolve. Um, so in that capacity, we created progressive web app for the website. We created a browser extension. Um, it really challenged me in a lot of different ways that I wasn't really expecting or accustomed to. And I'll forever be grateful for the fact that I had an opportunity to continue to grow and learn new skills in that new capacity. Um, so from there, we had gone through three acquisitions in the time that I have been hired. So three acquisitions in the five years that I was there. And the most recent acquisition happened in March of 2019. Um, we all saw it as a positive and unfortunately it did eventually lead to some restructuring within the company. And at that time, my entire product team um, along with several others from different parts of the company were let go. So that was at the end of September of 2019. So where does the social factory come into play? <laughs> I have always been hustling. <laughs> like I've always had a side hustle. I've always been moonlighting. So working full time and then having something on the side. I've been surrounded by entrepreneurs my entire life. My aunt owns and operates Horizon Health and Wellness Center in Tulsenburg. Uh, prior to that, she worked for many years as a self-employed graphic designer out of Mississauga. And my uncle has a drywall company. Um, some of my cousins are in real estate. And it just has been really inspiring to be surrounded by. And I'm really lucky that because of that experience, my family has always been incredibly supportive of my idea of wanting to pursue full-time self-employment eventually. Um, now, it wasn't really part of my plan for it to happen this soon. And I had actually started freelancing six years ago, um, doing blog writing, doing social media management, little projects like that on the side to have some extra income. Um, and in 2018, I realized, you know, I am branding all of these other small businesses. Maybe it's time that I actually brand myself as a business. And it took me a little bit of time. I was going back and forth between Oxford Social Co. and The Social Factory in terms of names. Um, if you've been following me for a while, you probably have heard the kind of origin story behind the name The Social Factory. But for me, The Social Factory represents exactly what it says. Social to me means community and collaboration. And factory means pumping out content, creation. And together, I think that The Social Factory is very much all-encompassing of myself and what I want this brand to be and how I want it to be perceived. And it's really taken off from there. So in March of 2018, I named the business, I registered the business, got my business number, and held my first workshop um, shortly after that with the help from Community Futures Oxford and more specifically Lindsay Wilson and they have been an incredible resource to me and for a lot of small businesses particularly women-led businesses within our community and 
in September 2019, when I was let go from my job, I had an opportunity to decide, am I going to look for another nine to five or am I going to try and take my business full time? At the time, I was already booking most of my evenings through the week with client work, uh, client meetings, because I was still working my nine to five. And I realized like, if I put those client meetings into daytime hours and actually spend the daytime instead of my evenings and weekends working on these projects, I can probably fill up the majority of my week and have my evenings and weekends open again. So I decided that I would try to take my business full time uh, instead of trying to find another typical nine to five job. That was in October and I haven't looked back since. Um, I've been doing the Social Factory full time for seven months now. It has been an insane journey. It's been so incredibly busy. The community support that I've received, the amazing projects that I've had the opportunity to work on has just been incredible. And I am really, really excited to see how the social factory continues to grow and evolve. Um, it's something that I always hoped would happen for myself, but that I didn't necessarily see happening this soon. My plan was always I would take mat leave when we have a kid eventually and then maybe not go back to work. Maybe then take my business full time and gradually work into the idea of being a stay-at-home working mom and things obviously happened a little bit differently than uh, what we had initially planned but I've always kind of lived by the idea that the more strict your plan is the easier it is to break so I've tried to navigate things with a little bit more flexibility than I have several years ago and that makes things a lot easier for me. So in terms of where the social factory came from, what my professional background is and how I got to this point, that kind of sums it all up. Um, anything to do with the social media management and uh, graphic work and web work, a lot of that I am self-taught in, but some of it also comes from, of course, my college days, as well as a lot of the opportunities that I was fortunate enough to have through my employment opportunities over the last 10 years. Um, so it's, it's really been a great opportunity for me to work within the community that I love so much. I am born and raised in Oxford County, and it's one of the main reasons that I really enjoy being able to work with these communities and these small businesses that really contribute to the heart of this community. So that's my story. You asked, I answered. <laughs> um, if you have any other ideas for videos that you wanna see, comment them down below. Please be sure to subscribe to my channel. Um, I put out a new video every Friday. And if you aren't already, follow me on Instagram at thesocialfactory.ca and I will see you in my next video. Bye. And to, you're very distracted into the program and Jack get out of here.